This presentation is on AI planning in robotic pathfinding. In this presentation, I will introduce a way to bridge the gap between the real-world domain and the, gra and the graph presentation. This video is made for the creative challenge in the AI planning course on Coursera. First, a pathfinding problem is like this. Given two places A and B, find a path from A to B. Then we know if A and B are two nodes in the graph, we can run dice trust or A star to find the path. However, in the real world, the graph is usually not directly available for us. What we have is usually a map like this. Then the question is how to construct a graph from a map. I will show you one way using the visibility graph. First, we need to represent the obstacles as polygons. Obstacle can be a wall, a bat, etc. Some obstacles have a round shape like the commode, but we still approximate them as polygons. In this way, we change the image on the left to a set of polygons on the right. Then, we can construct our visibility graph with the polygons. The visibility graph is a graph such that the nodes in the graph represent the vertices of the polygons. An edge between two nodes is this if and only if the straight line connecting the two vertices does not intersect with the obstacles. Note that the edges of the obstacles are also considered satisfying the condi condition. I use red color to highlight them. After we have the visibility graph, we can find the shortest path between two locations, star and go, in the following way. First, connect star and go to all vertices of the obstacles, with a line if the line is not blocked by an obstacle. The line directly from star to go is also considered. Then, with the addition nodes for star and go, and the edges connecting them to other nodes in the visibility graph. We can run the graph search algorithm to find the path between them. Now, I talk about how to handle the size of the robot. In the previous discussion, we can see the robot as a point, which does not have any size. However, in the real world, the size of the ro robot matter. In the following scenario, a small robot can go through the red line. However, a bigger one cannot. To handle the size of the robot, we can shrink the robot back to a point. At the same time, we enlarge obstacles. In the previous scenario, for a small robot, there is a gap between the obstacles after we grow them. So the red line is feasible, the feasible path. However, for the big one, the two obstacles overlap after enlargement. As a result, the red line is blocked, which indicates it is not feasible. Next, I will talk about how to enlarge the obstacles. We approximate our robot as a disk. Assume the radius of the robot is R. First step is move each edge of the obstacle a distance R away. Way. Then there is a gap between the edges. Second step is that we elongate the edges so that the adjacent edges intersect each other. Then it is done. Note that this method is a conservative approximation. Some problem occurs at the vertices. 
but in our case, it, usually it doesn't matter. So, to the conclusion, in the previous presentation, I present a way to convert a map in the real world to a graph by constructing visibility graph. I also present a way to handle the size of the robot by shrinking it to a point while enlarging the obstacles. Finally, I want to point out some problems which is not touched by this presentation. The first problem is that what if the, sh what if the shape of the robot cannot be well approximated by a circle? What shall we do? We can use the Minkowski sum, which you can search the Wikipedia to see what it is. The second question is that if the shape of the robot is not a circle, then orientation comes into our consideration. How to handle the orientation of a robot? The question is that we transform our problem to the configuration space. You can also search Wikipedia to see what the configuration space it is. Then, if you know what the configuration space it is, you will notice that the obstacles in the configuration space is usually quite compact. Then, what shall we do? And I don't have an answer yet, but now the direction I'm looking at now is the probabilistic roadmap approach.